So my name is Verena Hölzel. I'm an independent journalist um, based in Yangon, Myanmar. I've been reporting on the Rohingya crisis ever since I moved here in 2015. I originally came to Myanmar because I wanted to witness the transition from over half a century of military dictatorship to democracy and what I ended up with really is a genocide. I'm particularly intrigued with the question how this genocide was able to unfold. I grew up in Germany and I think like many other people there I've always been haunted by the question how my own people could let something like a genocide happen and I think in a way now I, I witnessed it um, in, in real time. So the Rohingya are a Muslim minority um, living in Rakhine State. Rakhine State is one of Myanmar's poorest states. State propaganda calls them a national security threat. They say they're terrorists and they don't belong to Myanmar. They illegally entered from Bangladesh and this is really what the people in Myanmar have soaked up. But the truth is that um, the Rohingya did have citizenship in Myanmar and it was um, taken away from them by successive military juntas and with the citizenship they lost their rights and I mean they even lost their identity really. So on August 25, 2017, ARSA, the Arakan Rohingya Salvation Army, a Rohingya insurgent group, um, attacked several police posts in Myanmar and the military um, retaliated with what they called a security operation that the UN is saying had hallmarks of genocidal intent. What happened is that hundreds of villages were burnt down, um, people were raped, killed, tortured. The operation triggered a mass exodus of refugees. Um, so within just a matter of a couple of weeks, hundreds of thousands of Rohingya crossed the border into, into Bangladesh. It was an absolutely overwhelming situation. You would see masses and masses of people. They came over the border. They were injured, traumatized. They were hungry. We had people bang on our car um, because they were begging for help. Women gave birth on, on, on muddy roads. And on the other side of the border in Myanmar, you could still see like dark smoke clouds over the burning villages. I was going back and forth between Myanmar and, and Bangladesh and it just felt like going back and forth between two completely different worlds. So in Myanmar you would have people take to the streets in support of the military while on the other side of the border I witnessed this humanitarian crisis that was quite hard to process. So I would find myself extending in the middle of the chaos in Bangladesh and, and scroll through my Facebook feed and I would see people, maybe even friends, call the Rohingya drama queens and just lab label everything fake news. So reporting on the Rohingya from within Myanmar is really tricky because it's such a polarizing topic that it's hard to find people who would go on the record. Um, or, I mean, even talk to you, really. Um, so we did this story in Rakhine State last year on young Rakhine Buddhist activists who, who are trying to build bridges between the Rohingya community and the, the Buddhist community. And it took me really quite some time to convince them to, to open up and to trust me. And I'm, I'm so grateful they did because I know that it actually it can have real consequences if, if you're being identified as someone who has sympathy for the Rohingya in Myanmar. Like this one source, for example, told me how he was, um, he was attacked with a machete for like trying to build peace. There's um, around 100,000 Rohingya um, that are being kept in displacement camps um, and in something that you uh, well, you just really have to call it a ghetto in the 
state capital Sitwe. So these people are not allowed to leave. Um, we are not allowed to get in. Then you have the conflict zone in the north um, that is not open for independent investigations. And then you have Rohingya left in villages all over Rakhine state. Um, but you would really think twice um, before you go in there because it might, again, it might have consequences and maybe not so much for me, but it might have serious consequences for um, the local colleagues who work with you. I've done like six or seven trips to the camps by now and um, it's really gone from this like chaotic situation in the in the beginning to a situation where the NGOs um, got more organized um, and people started to rebuild their lives to now a situation where uh, you can really sense the frustrations. People slowly realize that they are stuck in these camps. Like it's been two years, their shelters are falling apart again. Donor support is fading, and the international community is isn't that interested anymore. And and they sense that. I hope that we were able to show that the Rohingya community is not um, monolithic by giving different people um, a voice. We ran this story about. Rohingya entrepreneurs in the camp. I met people who developed creative business ideas. There's this guy who um, opened up a cinema. There's another guy who trades Bollywood movies from phone to phone. Um, there's other people who write job applications for other people. So that was really a nice story to report on because it showed that the Rohingya aren't only victims. And I think while it is really important to document everything that has happened to them. I think as journalists, we also owe them the stories that um, humanize them a bit more. Genocide is not about one single clearance operation. It's a process of um, dehumanizing people and of taking their rights away. I was in Rakhine State and together with my fixer who is Muslim, um, we went to a tea shop because we wanted to chat with some everyday people and find out where this rejection of the Rohingya is coming from. And we found this elderly man and he was um, pleased to talk to us and he went on and on and on. He explained, <laughs> he explained to us how he hasn't met a Muslim person in years and he also really, really does not want to meet a Muslim person um, and all of this while making friends with um, my Muslim fixer and yeah, we never, we never told him but um, that episode really explained a lot to me.